everyone. This video is part two of getting our environment up and running. Now, if you didn't watch part one, please take the two minutes that the video is. Go and watch it so you understand what it is that we're doing together. So this is, like I said, the install portion of this. I've linked to the Mandiant repo for Flare VM below, as well as our repo that we're gonna be using because I did a few things different and I wanted to go ahead and document that. One of the main things is I went ahead and deployed on Windows 11 development environment. Now this isn't listed on their repo as a supported environment. It went a lot better for me though. And the next thing is I strongly encourage you to use VirtualBox. I did several attempts to run this on VMware and could never get it to successfully deploy to the point where I needed it to. I, we did get it up and running to where it changed the background and things like that, but it just didn't have the tools and the functionality that we're going to need. And I said we because I outsourced this to a lot of friends when I was trying to get it up in VMware. I, I'm not gonna be on camera for this because you don't need to see me, you just need to see what's going on. With that, let's jump into our install process. Now I've gone ahead and pulled up the repository for Flare VM. There are a few things that I forgot to say before we jumped into this that I'd like to mention now. First of all, the reason I made this video, which I covered a little bit ahead of time, is not because we're not gonna be using this repository. We're gonna be relying on it heavily. However, I wanted to ensure that you didn't get you know, freaked out because packages were failing, there are a few things that I changed. For example, there was um, a link that they give for how to deal with Windows Defender. Uh, I went a different route that helped me a little bit better to be able to get that done quickly. So you're gonna see that here. I know there are a few of you that are gonna go a different way when it comes to the operating system. So I wanted to make sure that I gave you my experience in this. Okay, let's kick this off with the operating system. Now, as I've mentioned, they have two versions that they state, you know, are what's supported. Windows 10 with Microsoft Edge and Windows 10 development environment. I did not have a good experience with Microsoft uh, 10 with Edge. I'd recommend that you, if you're gonna go with Windows 10 to use the development environment, whatever you do, do not use the home edition. You're not gonna have the permissions that you need in order to properly configure that. Now, as I've mentioned, I decided to use Windows 11. That's gonna be available in the same link as the Windows 10 development environment. Just scroll down one more and choose the 11. There are a few things that you need to ensure are installed. First of all, Net 4.5 and WMF 5.1. If you use the environments that I strongly recommend, these are already going to be installed, but below I will post the commands that you can use in order to ensure that this is correct. You can also see below that I've posted timestamps with this video, rely on those. There are a few sections that you're already gonna know how to do perhaps, for example, setting up the virtual machine. If you try to sit through that, you're gonna feel like, oh, this video isn't for me and kind of lose interest. So go ahead and skip ahead to the other portions. You can see on the screen that I'm setting up my environment. I'm not gonna walk you through all of it because there's no reason to talk to you about what's on the screen. I do wanna tell you that I upped the RAM to almost double of what there is there. Given what we're gonna be doing, I just felt more comfortable having that additional RAM. I'm also the person who has 64 gigs of RAM on their personal machine, but I thought you guys might be able to relate to that. For those of you who are new and are used to working with ISOs, you'll notice that this isn't an ISO machine. There's a link below to help provide you more information on what VMDK is. We're all here to learn, so make sure to make use of these links and you know, take some time to read them. Okay, let's go ahead and import our machine. Now, if you're following along, you're going to need to pause through portions of this because through the power of editing, I'm gonna kind of fast forward the process. You all don't need to sit here for an hour. Once the VM is up and running, go ahead and go to the Mandiant Flare VM webpage. That way you can download the packages, you can download the code, and we can just really work within this VM without having to go back and forth to our host. Now, of course, I'm a big advocate of actually reading the readme files so that you know what we're gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead though and download the code. That way, when I get there, I'm ready just to deploy. And you know, I like getting this party started. 
Don't forget when you download this package to go ahead and unzip it. Yeah, I had a time where I forgot to do that. So just a friendly reminder. The first thing that we wanna do is disable Windows Defender. After all, we don't need our box defended if we're the ones that are running the malware. Please, 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 you know, double check, triple check that you are turning the firewall off on your VM, not on your host machine. The next thing I'm gonna do is walk you through the process that I went through in order to turn off Windows Defender. As I said, there is a link there if you'd prefer to walk through it. However, I just had success with the way that I did it. Once you get your start menu pulled up, you're actually gonna want to choose Windows Security. Once that's up and running, click on Virus Threat Protection and then go down to Virus Threat Protection Settings. From there, you're gonna turn everything off, real-time protection, cloud delivered protection, automatic sample submissions. You're going to get pop-ups going like, are you sure you want to do this? Don't be crazy, we need to protect you. Well, we're playing with malware, so we're probably a little crazy, so turn them all off. From there, you're gonna go down to your exclusions file and you're going to want to exclude everything, everything from C on because yes, we're crazy and hey, we wanna be able to infect anything and everything that we decide to. Next, we're gonna pull up PowerShell and make sure that you're opening it with administrative permissions. From there, you're gonna go into you know, your download directory, which is where I assume you downloaded the uh, code to and then make sure you go to the right directory. I, I, I left the mistake in, you know what? I'm gonna own my mistakes, I'm learning too. Now there are a few more steps that you need to do before you launch the script and those are listed within the repository. Once you get those set up, go ahead and install the script and this is going to take forever. Seriously, just walk away, go watch some Netflix. I went to the grocery store. If you sit and watch it, every single error is gonna freak you out. You're gonna think, oh my God, Wireshark didn't install when in reality, it's going to install a little bit later, even though it errored now. I'm gonna go ahead and stop here. If you're interested to see what packages are being put in, perhaps some of the code, this is where you're gonna be able to find it. There are two folders that you may wanna look at. And the first one is lib. That's where the files that they know are working are going to be located. And there's lib bad. These are files that they already know that um, have issues downloading. Majority of them that I actually saw were checksum issues. So, hey, if you can rewrite that, maybe this is where you step in to you know, go in and share that in the repository. Now, remember, I'm heavily editing, so you don't have to sit through this. So yours is not gonna go this quickly. The machine is going to restart several times. You'll see the background for a little bit and think that you're done. You're not done. This background will change into the Mandiant background. So just give it time till your terminal pops up telling you that you're done. Jumping in real quick to show you the wall of errors that showed up and why I'm telling you just to walk away for a little while. All right, you can see that our back ground has indeed changed and it's telling us that we can exit. Congratulations, all of you. We have an environment up and ready for our first lab. Now you can see on the screen me going through and checking what applications were installed. I'm, I'm not gonna put the whole thing in here. You all don't need to see it. I have listed the applications that did not install inside that GitLab repo along with the links. Don't worry about installing those now unless you wanna play with them because they're not gonna be part of our next steps. All right, let me jump back onto camera. Now, hopefully this video has helped you be able to install your environment. If you ran into any issues that I didn't, please, please, please comment below. As I said in our previous video, like, this is how we're going to learn. This is how we're gonna sharpen our skills. If you found solutions, if you came up with things that can help us that perhaps I didn't actually you know, put into this video, please update that GitLab repo. People are going to be starting this journey a little bit after us and it, we really have to come together as a community to be able to learn. If you update the repo, please comment below so people know to go back and check on it. Um, okay, with that being said, make sure that you subscribe so you know when our next video is going to be, and that's going to be our Wireshark networking video. Like it so they let me keep doing this all of, uh, for you all. And yeah, let's keep going on our journey.